The yurt is surrounded by 70-foot spruce trees, and one of them is leaning the wrong way. If it falls, it could flatten their home, so it has to come down. Hig wants us to take on the task ourselves. Unfazed by the danger and knowing full well the nearest hospital isn't even accessible by road. I've been learning about how to fall trees, and the way you really learn these things is you do them. If we're in the middle of a forest and you're going to have a practice, brilliant. <laughs> Your house is there. The tree is just 20 feet from the family home, so I waste no time in climbing up and tying a rope around the trunk. There we go. Let me try pulling on that now. I think that's going to work. How does it look up there? Yeah, it looks good. Next, we take the rope across a steep gully and tie the other end to another tree, anchoring it. <laughs> Go on, Hig. Yeah, it's Pulling on the rope, we attach a winch to tighten it further. It finally starts to take the full weight of the tree, pulling it away from the yurt. He's a fish out of water here in many ways, because if you just see him, I just think computer geek, and I think he should be working in Silicon Valley. But then when you see him here, I think he has this kind of boyhood enthusiasm and excitement, and, and I think secretly he's really happy because, he, you know, we're mucking around in the woods. This is, this is like proper boy's own stuff here. This is, this is what every child should have, as far as I'm concerned, you know, a little experience of this. With the rope under enormous pressure, Hig carefully cuts into the trunk on both sides taking just the right amount away. You nervous? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Show it. Too little, and the tree won't move. Too much, and it falls the wrong way onto their home. Surprised it's not doing anything yet. It's not, it would be bad if this was closing. Yeah. It'd be good if it was opening. It's not doing either. Hig desperately needs some extra help as things aren't going to plan. He calls over Bjorn for an extra pair of hands. The tree has lost 95% of its stability. So it's just held up by 5% and effectively, as he pulls on that winch and tightens the rope, he's going to pull the tree down. Is everything OK, Hig? In the extremely unlikely event that it goes towards the yurt, it hits, hits the kitchen. OK. I get the impression, actually, if that did happen, Hig would just go, oh, well, we'll build another one. I don't know if Aaron would be so happy, though. All right, we're pulling now. Aaron and the kids are safely out on a walk. I think the tree is swaying a little bit. The rope has snapped. That rope failed. Something failed. So the problem now is we've got nothing holding the tree from going this way. I feel nerves for Hig, for sure. If this was me, I'd be feeling sick now. With no time to lose, Hig and Bjorn attach a second rope, and I hammer metal wedges into the cut. Together, we should force it down in the right direction. Now, it's man versus tree. Yeah. No, it's still... Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's going, it's going. Timber! 